Assalamu alaikum everybody. I hope you're doing well. Again, sorry about the terrible lighting. It's still the same day, by the way, the 6th of December, but you see me in different clothes because different times of the day. <laughs> um, while we were in Samsun, so I had this crazy idea a week before going to Samsun. I said, I want to go to Trabzon. I, had a f I have a friend here who told me it's, he's from there and he told me it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. I've heard it from so many people and it's very close. So I said, you know what? I don't know that I'm ever going to go to the Black Sea again. I don't know. And so this is like a once in a lifetime opportunity. So let me jump on that. So I told my friend and it was just really crazy. And then subhanAllah, it ended up, basically it ended up all working out. Just all this stuff happened. And now that I look back, it would have been impossible to go on my trip had it been, you know, just me just catching micro buses and trying to get there. So um, a day after, you know, the family I was staying at, with, sorry, they all went to Trabzon because they have family there as well. And, you know, it's just so much nicer when you're with family. And these people were so nice. But I'll talk about the hospitality later. It wasn't far from Samson, about four to six hours, depending on how fast you drive. And um, so we pass uh, Trabzon proper and we start going up some mountains. We cross a bridge from one mountain to another mountain and then cross another bridge. We're literally crossing from mountain to mountain up there. Um, it was at night time and we were going so fast. I, I literally thought I was going to die. I was like, this is it. Uh, many near-death experiences, by the way. But I just let it go. I was like, whatever. We're going to fall down a mountain. I'm going to die. But whatever. You know? Yeah. Oh, you can see my blanket here. Woo! Yeah, uh... And, you know, we were just, like, on the edge of the cliff. It's not very wide at all, and the driver was going very fast, way too fast in my opinion, but whatever. So we get up, and there's this house on the side of a mountain. When I say on the side of a mountain, I mean if you walk 10 feet out, you know, from the front of the house, uh, you're going to die, basically. You're going to fall down and die. I mean, we were on the side of a mountain, and it was so cool. I can't describe how cool it was. Uh, and this was the grandfather of the family. And so I, I need to take some time and just describe this person who I met because he was one of the coolest people I've ever met in my life. Now, I didn't exchange a lot of words with him, but look, you'll see why. I think he's so cool. Um, he owned the house. Just imagine this old Turkish guy with a white beard, right? And to me, and you may be laughing if you're from Trabzon, but to me, he was like, he was mountain man, right? Um, he had a bee farm. He raised bees. And, you know, we came in really late, and they're like, are you hungry? They, they had all this food out. And as we're eating, he's there on the other side of the kitchen, and he's stirring bee food, this, like, very sweet mixture to help them get through the winter. It's much colder in Trap Zone. And I, was, I just thought that was so cool. I ate what was probably the most delicious honey I've ever had in my whole entire life. I exaggerate not. Now, I love honey. I've tried many different types of honey. I mean, not, not as much as other people, but, you know, and I'm a big honey guy, and this honey was so delicious. I just put it on the bread, and there's special bread that they make just in tubs on, and they make it with a wood stove rather than, you know, the metal stoves, and it was just so good. Um, it was fresh, and it apparently snows a lot there in Trabzon. It's a rough winter, uh, so, you know, I, I saw a little bit of snow. You'll see it in some of the pictures. So this man, um, this grandfather mountain man, right? He memorized the Qur'an at age nine. And he lived in Germany for about 42 years. You know, a lot of Germans have lived there. And because the imam of the local jami or the masjid, you know, the, the Muslim house of worship, was gone, uh, what happened is, you know, he was there to lead Fajr, which is the morning prayer. And he was like, I'm going to wake you all up at, what was it, like 4.45 a.m. or something. And we, we got home late. So I was like, okay, let's do this. I hope I get up. He wakes us up, and it was just such a beautiful experience. Now, I was shivering from the cold water. They were they don't have hot water in their house. I don't think so. I don't remember hot water anyways. Um, you know, from making my ablution or ab dust, you have to wash up. I'm shivering. I'm drying up, wearing my big sweater, and walking in my PJs, which are also sweatpants. You know, it's just like a two-minute walk to go to the jami. And I really remembered, actually, Camp Al-Hilal and good experiences there because, you know, the whole waking up in the morning, making wudu in very cold water and then walking to go pray. Um, 
and you know, I was just thinking of the adhan, the call to prayer, and I remember the story of Abraham, Ibrahim alayhi salam, and how he called to prayer, and it spread so far. I mean, it's in Trabzon, in these mountains, in the middle of the mountains, and it's just you can hear it, and it's echoing between the mountains at you know five a.m. It's just so beautiful. Uh, there's only one time zone in Turkey. I maybe it's a whole national thing, even though the I mean it's pretty wide. So prayer times just get earlier and earlier and earlier as you go more east uh, because prayers are according to the sun in Islam. So I thought that was interesting. It doesn't seem like the best idea. Whatever, I won't comment. Um, when the, While the sun rose over the mountains, I just waited outside shivering. And I it was just, you know, you're in this village. And I saw these old ladies and men. I mean, really old. All of them are 60 or 70 plus, And they're carrying these heavy bags. They appeared to look like grain and loads of firewood. This one old lady was carrying firewood on her back. Um, one was carrying a bucket of fresh milk. She had just milked uh, a cow. It was a really humbling sight. And even when we were moving, this is a later thing, uh, they were they were moving some stuff to go back to Samsun. The grandfather was just like picking up stuff like it was nothing, like really heavy bags that um, other people closer to my age were struggling with. It took too, too long for the sun to rise, I admit, so I went in after about an hour. I waited an hour after the official sunrise time. The thing is, again, I know this happened many times when I wanted a beautiful sunrise experience. It's mountains, so <laughs> it takes a very long time, and it was freezing. Before I get into bed again, um, you know, for, for a nap before breakfast, I see a bee underneath my cover, and it's just like crawling around. It looks so tame, and so we just pick it up and put it out, and then, you know, it went back to the beehive, I'm sure, so... That, it was just really nice. My friend caught it. I opened the window. Um, you know, it's normal not to drink from tap water in Istanbul because it's so dirty. It's so polluted. So we have these big jugs. Maybe I'll show you one time. Big, Just, you know, those big jugs, the blue ones, 20 liter. But you have a pump. So you just pump it and then you can fill up your water bottle and stuff. I know the plastic is not necessarily good. I should get a metal one. That'd be healthier. The air was also very, very clean over there. I'm telling you, it was so pure. It was just, Trabzon was a very, very good experience. Um, so I was basically drinking from mountain water, from spring mountain water. You know, you have that, that company in America. Well, this was pure from the source, fresh. Um, for breakfast, I ate a food consisting of Trabzon corn flour or something else. It was very good and weird. And they said it's only there. And we dipped the Trabzon bread into it. And it's called Kuimak. Kuimak. I wrote that down. Um, it said that for these people, there's no Istanbul and no Ankara. It's just Trabzon. Like, uh, so when you go to Hajj, the pilgrimage, and you go to Mecca, which is, you know, a, you know the most holy site, basically. In Islam, you say, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ لَبَّيْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ لَبَّيْكَ إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ وَنَعْمَةَ لَكَ وَالْمُلْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ you know, you say this this du'a, this prayer, this supplication. Well, when we were entering, the people in the car were saying this. I mean, it's it's like to the extreme, huh? Maybe. They drink the water, and the, the people were telling me this is like Zemzem. And Zemzem is the pure spring that's in Mecca. I mean, this is something that people pay for. They, they love to just get it and drink it and make a prayer. And they consider their water that. So it's like, for them, literally, there's, there's nothing else. And what were they saying? Lies... Or there's some sort of people, maybe someone can help me here, and they're from the east, Rize and stuff. Well, they you could argue they're not the Trabzon people, but anyway, they're like, this is Lazistan, this is not Turkey. Very interesting. People who, when I ask them, are you Turkish, they don't recognize that way. This is the problem of the nation state right here. Uh, I learned some interesting things. For example, Hamsi means uh, anchovies. Anchovies, yeah, it's delicious the way they fry them. Oh, very good. By the way, don't listen to that whole anchovies are nasty thing. Those people don't know. So, it apparently comes from Arabic. Hamsi is Hamsin, which means 50 in Arabic. Because they used to go and fish. And on the 50 coldest days, they used to fish for these anchovies. And Trabzon and Samsun are famous for them and also for hazelnuts. I got a bunch of hazelnuts. I don't have something to break them with. so I need to eat them, but the, the mom there was so nice. Everyone was so, so, so nice. I can't describe their generosity. But they're famous for hazelnuts, and so it's cool. You just, like, drink Turkish coffee and eat hazelnuts. That's so cool. Uh, the people there, the old men, apparently are retired. They don't really have jobs up there, and there's a lot of subsistence farming. So you have to be kind of wealthy, apparently, to live in that village, which, I, you know, is surprising. So the Dhuhr prayer comes around, the afternoon prayer, the noon prayer, sorry. 
and the grandfather says, your Arabic, and he was praising my pronunciation. I mean, obviously my pronunciation isn't very good. Uh, but he was like, do you want to make the call to prayer? And I was like, well, I've never called to prayer, you know, and had an echo. And so he let me have that honor. And so I called to prayer and my voice was echoing between two mountains in northern Turkey. Yes, um, it was, it was, uh, you know, I hope it's accepted. I hope I get reward for it. But it was just like an experience there. Um, then we left. So I rode in the backseat of the pickup truck as we started to go up the mountain. We were going to go on a little trip for the afternoon. And so this old lady's just walking down the mountain. I mean, it's, it's a long walk. And you just stop by, you open the door, you're like, he's like, come on in. Apparently it's his cousin. So these people are originally Greek. They've been there for um, a couple thousand years at least. And so he's speaking with her and it's not Turkish. It's this Greek, old Greek language. And Turkish is called uh, like Romancha, Romanja or something. Roman, which sounds like Roman. But they say Greek when they say English, and it's about 50% intelligible with modern Greek in Greece. Very interesting. And, you know, this old lady with a walking stick and, you know, big stuff on her back. She comes in there. And, oh, they're called Laz people. I just found it Laz, Lazistan. Their language is not really written. Apparently, it's close to Bulgarian, Georgian, and now written in Cyrillic. I'm just getting this from the people. I didn't look on Wikipedia, so correct me if I'm wrong. Um, from a real source, not Wikipedia. After a few minutes... A young guy just jumps into the back of the pickup truck. And we're in the back seat, so we're still inside. He's just on the back. And then when we just gave him a ride as well, it's like going down, pick up people. It was really cool. Winding, rocky, bumpy roads. We're just like bouncing around. <laughs> we went higher and higher and higher and higher. And just everywhere. I'm telling you, I'm looking right and left. And you just see the rocks and there's this water falling. Waterfall, waterfall, waterfall. Across the road, there's water. It's just this whole mountain is gushing with fresh spring water and it was delicious it was so good i wish you could be there um there's a river in the middle like through the valley and we just like crossed it left or right and so i just i just looked at the grandfather and i asked him in turkish i told him is this water clean in this little river here and he just turns around and he's like Guze, which means lovely beautiful and so i said can i drink some he's, he just stops the truck I get out, I have some pictures, they're not very good, but, uh, and I just get out, and I dip my hand in, into the river, and I drink, I drink fresh water from a river, it was cool, it was crisp, it was delicious, it was clean, it was cold, it was colder than, it was just fresh, cold water, and it was so good, and I was like, wow, we just stopped to drink fresh water, I mean, this is how it should be, but you can't do that in Istanbul. And we just took our water bottles and we filled up. We just filled up from the river. And it's so cool. We saw some cows grazing. But they, apparently they were too small to be slaughtered for Eid. Uh, some places on the mountain had snow as well. It was very interesting. So we stopped for tea in the mountains as a break. And there was a hotel there. I mean, this, this took us hours. If you went from the actual Trabzon city, it would take you hours to get up there. Um, I, I wrote down two to three hours approximately. Um, and then this is the mountain where tea leaves are grown. So they have tea leaves over here and they're special for that. The sugar was different there. We sat down and I took a picture. It's these really hard rocks. Now, usually there are cubes. I find them here. So what you do is you drink a little bit of tea and you, you take a bite, you crisp, and you keep the piece of sugar in your mouth and then you drink. This is how they do it. So I said, when in Rome. So I did that as well. And then you take a sip of tea. It's a new way. And I was told we were 900 meters above sea level. I saw graves of martyrs. They weren't soldiers, but basically villagers. So when the Russians attacked this place, um, some people died, some regular farmers. And so we visited their graves and we saw some family there reciting Surat Yasin. This is a part of the Quran for them. And apparently Saudis and Libyans vacationed there, coming with their families. So this was a long day. I'm just going to stop it here. This was basically half of one day. And it was cool. We just stopped in the mountains and... You know, this is Turkey, you drink a lot of tea. We just stop and it's like, let's drink tea, let's take a break. And it was just very cool, very, very cool. I had a blast there.